Hi everybody, this is Adam Barogza over here at AHS Realty Pros. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and get an offer ready for submission to the selling side. And you're going to go ahead and need a couple of different things. First thing you're going to need to do is to access the property that you're interested in making an offer on via your MLS. So for the Bay Area here, I'm at ccartoday.com and you're basically going to go ahead and log in. And once you log in, you're going to go ahead and find the property that you want to make an offer on. In this case, I've already found a property. This is an older property here. It was listed by us. And I just want to show you guys this particular one for a reason, just so you guys understand as far as how would, you should put it down on the contract in case the two real estate agents are at the same brokerage and so here's the property that we have and so on this MLS sheet I can look up a couple of different pieces of information here I got the list price this is my MLS I also have the sold price so this property actually sold for 475,000 and it gives me the list date how many days this was on market and how many cumulative days this was on market let's me know that it's a three bedroom two bath and this is the square footage it was from public records this is the lot size so it was almost 10,000 square foot as far as the lot size it had two garage spaces one fireplace and a total of eight rooms right here and let me know that the property was vacant and also lets me know that it has a super box and it's vacant so go and leave your card at the property you don't need a 24-hour notice the lockbox is on the front door this is going to be the directions to the property there's no associated docs for this property so you definitely want to call the listing agent and ask them if they have any disclosures before submitting an offer and this was the exclusive uh, listing here it offered this amount to the selling side and it's not a dual variable and it's a full service listing gives me the the dre number for the agent the dre number for the brokerage this is going to be the assessor's parcel number here really important it acts like a social security number for the property tax and it lets me know that there's no city transfer tax here as well as this is how many uh, hits is gotten as far as clients and agents and these are going to be my remarks confidential remarks so the link here is posted for disclosure io if you wanted to access that you could definitely do so and it's a hyperlink which you could just click on and down here it lets me know more about uh, the actual property features so everything's covered there and this lets me know that there's no HOA here and basically I always do a PDF of this before I submit an offer so that way there's no disagreements of any of the information that was posted there I even have my clients sign this just so they know that I'm disclosing everything that I know about the property myself and it makes it a lot easier so the MLS sheet is definitely helpful to save it as a PDF print one out for your own records because you may find sometimes there is disagreements about compensation or verbiage that was used in the remarks um, and you want to make sure that you want to do the best job for your client now the second website you'll need to access is going to be your car.org or your California Association of Realtors and we're going to go to car.org org and once we're in car.org we're going to go ahead and log in and now we're logged in and we want to go ahead and hit access now so one thing before we start i've showed you guys how to uh, set up a template in a previous video so i'll have that link down below you guys want to access that first but we're going to be using that template that we created to submit this offer and this will make it really really easy since we don't have to do double data entry and we can just fly through this and get everything prepared on this so 
I have the terms of the contract which we're going to make right here. So the property is currently listed at 475,000. In our situation, the buyer here, uh, the buy buyer Bob wants to go ahead and make an offer for 481,000 and he's doing a conventional 5% down loan. He wants to put down 3% earnest money deposit into escrow. And I'm going to go over the math of this with you as I'm actually filling this out. So let's go ahead and jump into the transaction now. And now we're going to go ahead and go to dashboard. Once you're in dashboard, go ahead and click the blue plus icon right here. And we're going to click on new purchase or offer. And I'm going to go ahead and call this Zeta Way in Antioch. Okay, perfect. And if your MLS supports MLS Connect, you can easily just type in your credentials here and get in. In my particular situation, uh, currently it is not working, but uh, this is something that really makes it easy. So if this was working, you could just normally just hit this little find button and everything would pop up, but that's not the case today. So I'm going to show you how to manually do this. And we're going to go ahead and go to active. And we're going to go to that template that we set up, offer 2020. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. And sometimes I make a little comment here as far as um, what's the purchase price going to be. Just so I kind of remember. COE stands for close of escrow. So those are my major points of the transaction. And now all the documents that I'm going to need to go ahead and get this offer submitted are actually in here. And I'm going to go back to the cover sheet first. And we're only going to have one buyer on here, which is going to be Buyer Bob is his name. And I'm going to go ahead and just use uh, my emails here. Just so I'll show you guys how to get this signed on another video. We're going to take out buyer two. And buyer two is taken out here. And we're going to go ahead and look up the seller's information here. And we can do this several different ways. And we can uh, cover that in a different video. But I'm going to go ahead and call this seller sam if you guys want that video uh please comment down below i'll definitely make that for you or you might just find a link to it in the description box below as well so seller sam is here the owner record and there's only one seller so i'm going to go ahead and put him right here and i've checked this off so it's a little bit easier for the listing agent to see where the seller needs to sign or initial and all this information popped up in here. One of the things I do want to do in here is I want to go ahead and pop in the MLS ID number, which was 4088059. So that's the MLS ID number that we have. And the address populated correctly because we have the last four of the zip code on here. And we're going to go and put the list price as 475. That's what it was listed at. And we're going to go down here and type in some information as far as our purchase price. So for our example, we're going to go ahead and offer 481000 Our deposit amount is going to be right here, which is going to be the 3%. And the 3% of this particular transaction is going to equal $14,430. So we're going to write that information right here. 
Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and type in the amount financed right here. And we can figure that out easily by taking our $481,000 purchase price. And basically, we could times that by 0.95 uh, because we're taking out a 95% loan because we're putting 5% down. So there's two different ways of doing it. You can take the 481 times 0 0.95 or you could take the 481 and minus the 5% down, which came out to $24,000. And fifty dollars and either way you get the same exact number which is this right here so we're gonna go ahead and type in the four hundred and fifty six thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars into the amount financed here and this is a residential home and we're gonna go get rid of the subdivision in here and since I'm using a template, anything that I used before is going to come up in here automatically. But I normally don't change the title information on here as uh, I can do it on the actual residential purchase agreement. But if you wanted to go ahead and type it in here, we're going to go ahead and use WFG title on this one. And there we are in Brentwood, so I can leave that the same. And this information here is actually correct. This is my information which is going to be the DRE number for the brokerage and we also have my DRE number right here and we're going to go ahead and type in some information here for the the seller's brokerage which happens to be the same exact brokerage here and this is just an example but we're going to go ahead and fill all this out and I'm going to type in the suite number at the end here and select our DRE number here and for the agent I'm just going to make up a DRE number here and the same thing for their phone number I'm just going to make this up here uh, as this is not a real transaction but I do know that agent's name is going to be Daisy Bosn Danny That is all there, and I'm going to go ahead and type in Daisy VHS Realty Pros, um, and the lender information is not in here. It is a conventional loan, which you can update on here. And sometimes the hit or miss um, as far as the expiration date, but I'm going to go back to where I had this particular uh, purchase price and loan amount information and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in a for an example today I'm going to go ahead and put an expiration of the 27th at 5 p.m. and this is working most of the time now I've seen it where it doesn't filter over to the actual RPA but I like to use the cover sheet first because most of my work is going to be then very very simplified and I could hit back or save I'm going to go ahead and hit save on here. Now I get to come in here and this is my residential purchase agreement. So we're going to set this up. So the only thing we really have to do uh, on the next video is send it over for signatures. So I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to get rid of the second buyer since there's no second buyer here. and. I'm also going to go ahead and date any information that's relevant to my site. So I'm going to go date this. And Digital Inc. is the platform that I use, um, which is free and is part of your CAR, or California Association of Realtors membership. And it works really great. That's going to date this automatically. I'm not going to touch anything for Daisy here. And the wire fraud advisory is in here. So we got Bob, the buyer. Um, and Sam the seller here so they're both correct and we're gonna put the date in here and we're also gonna go ahead and change this to 25 days and here's gonna be our offer the way it's gonna be set up we're gonna do 25 day for the close of escrow 
10 days for the buyer inspection contingencies. We're also going to do 14 days on the appraisal, 17 days for the loan. And the buyer wants to keep all stoves and refrigerators. They want the title to be with WFG. And it's a 50-50 split. And sellers pay for home warranty. And then the offer expires within 48 hours at 5 p.m. So this is a summary of my transaction that I've confirmed with my buyer. So I'm going to change things up on here a little bit. So Daisy actually works for the same brokerage here. If they did work at two different brokerages, then we would be able to go ahead and leave it the way it is. But for this scenario, we're going to go ahead and change it to both the buyer and seller are actually represented by the same broker, which is All Home Sold Realty Pros. And we're going to go down here. And this is definitely checked off. Uh, and this is our initial 3% down that we calculated using this simple math right here, which was take the 481. And what we did is we took the 481,000 and we just times it by 0 0.03 and it gave us our 3% down. And we're going to scroll down over here. I normally don't check off anything here because uh, the buyer actually has to go wire the money over to the escrow company or um, they could drop off a check after they talk to the escrow officer. And I like to keep it simple. And I'm going to come down here a little tiny bit more. There's no increased deposits. This is going to be my first loan amount. And this is a conventional 5% down. Since this is kind of the default, I don't have to check off anything here. But one thing that I do always do is I always go ahead and put a interest rate on here. So this buyer is approved for the purpose of this example at 4.875. So I'm always going to talk to the lender and verify what that is. But in this situation, since interest rates go up and down, they fluctuate. I want to protect my buyer at the same time. Um, I want to make sure that I give them a little bit of uh, leeway in case the interest rate climbs a little bit. So I could either put 4.875% or I could put 5% if they uh, once I discuss it with the buyer. So in this example, I'm going to leave it at 5%. And We want to make sure we actually put this 5% right here. And they're not going to be paying any points on here. So I want to make sure I go ahead and get that noted on here too. And the way I do that is by putting 0 0.0001. So that just lets them know the buyer is not scheduled to point any points. So we're going to scroll down a little bit. If I was asking for any kind of credit, this is where I would write it down. If the seller was to credit buyer X amount of dollars towards buyer's closing costs, it would go on here. Or if I'm making an offer, and for example, right now, this is the coronavirus epidemic. What I would do is I would put on here subject to um, physical inspection upon uh, confirmation. Uh, and maybe put a date in here because uh, we really have no idea what's going on right now. But this is where those terms would go in. And we're going to scroll down a little tiny bit. Whenever I submit an offer, which I'll have a video to you, for you guys, um, what I do is I always attach verification of down payment and closing costs. So check off this box right here. And we're going to go leave the, the appraisal as 14 days. And one thing, be very mindful of the day of the week. So today is a Friday. So I want to talk to my lender. So if they give him back an answer today, earlier in the day, let's just say around uh, 540, um, I'm not going to be able to get an answer back because it's already 2 o'clock here. And we're not going to be able to order appraisal. So I'm going to be burning one day, two days, three days. And sometimes there's a holiday on a Monday too. And now I've just burnt up four days. So always be mindful of the calendar 
when you're making an offer um, because you may be burning up four days just over the weekend. So keep that in mind and talk to the lender as far as how their appraisals are falling into place, how quickly they're getting them done. And I've also checked out this little box right here under the template where it says the letters attached for the loan approval. I always submit a loan approval with any offer that is not cash. And I have the lender call as well. And I copy them on the actual email. So it just makes it more automated. We're going to put down 17 days for the loan. Again, be mindful of the calendar. And if there was no loan contingency, you had a fully um, underwritten approval and you talked to the loan officer, you might want to talk to your buyer about this option if they had uh, everything else in place. But definitely discuss this with your broker and the buyer uh, before you do remove any contingencies. We're going to go down a little tiny bit here. And one thing we notice here is that the buyer inspection advisory is already attached. This is done by default. And we've also checked off others where the market conditions and wire fraud advisories are attached. And this is special language that I put down on here so we don't burn up uh, calendar days for the for escrows because of the Friday or a holiday. And I have that in the video description for the templates. And I have the seller paying for property ID or JCP uh, natural hazard reports, which include the environmental and the tax data, which makes it really, really easy to calculate the tax data and I always check off this box here that the seller will pay for the carbon monoxide uh, detectors so I'm gonna have the buyer so the buyer wants to request that the seller and the buyer split um, the escrow fees which is a 50 50 split here and make sure you put it down this exact way the title holder is going to be WFG Escrow is going to be WFG as well. And this particular city of Antioch has no city transfer tax. So we're going to uncheck that box. And the county transfer tax in our area is normally picked up by the seller. And I'll have a link to this chart right here on who pays what in California and everything here just customary and can be negotiated. So depending on the market you're in, we're here in Contra Costa County and in Contra Costa County, as we can see in the city of Antioch, there is no city transfer tax for the city of Antioch. So uh, keep that in mind. And this will be in the description box below and always try to use the most current one because things do shift and keep that in mind. So we have the seller paying for the uh, county transfer and the buyer in our situation is not going to be paying for a TC. I'm going to be doing the paperwork and the seller is being asked to pay for the home warranty here through First American Home Warranty, which is the Eagle Premier at a cost of $575 and it's the upgraded coverage that covers the AC. This home does not have a pool and you could also put this down like this to make it easier to read for some people so we're gonna go ahead and go like that just so it's a little bit clearer so that's done and if the buyer wasn't getting a home warranty if it's a fixer upper you would check out that box and that automatically kind of just gets rid of everything in that field you click on that in our situation the buyer wants to keep all the stoves all refrigerators and the home does not have any washer or dryer so we're going to go ahead and uncheck that box and the buyers take possession at 5 p.m on the close of escrow most of the times they get everything recorded about two or three o'clock and you'll get notice so this just gives you a little bit of breathing room so that way you don't have the buyer waiting in front of the house 
at 2.30 and it's still not recorded. So I normally put down 5 p.m. here. And we're not offering any kind of rent back. And, and scroll down a little bit further. I normally put down right here that the seller has five days to go ahead and deliver the documents as far as disclosures to the buyers after confirmation of acceptance. And in this case here, we're gonna go ahead and change the buyer inspection contingencies to 10. And in case this home is going to be HOA, I always leave this as five. So for this particular situation, we're going to go ahead and remove this as there's no HOAs here. We're going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit further. And we're going to go ahead and put in 5 p.m. This is the expiration date of that offer. We're going to come down here for the inspection advisory. This is automatically filled out. And this is a new form that came up uh, in the library earlier this year. So our buyer Bob is already pre-filled out in here, which is great. And we're gonna go down a little further. There we go. So this is pretty much complete. In our situation, I'm gonna show you guys how to go ahead and get the submitter over. And if you guys got any questions, please always check with your broker first. One thing we're gonna go and check on since we're going to be submitting the market conditions advisory as indicated on the form, I'm going to send this out for signatures. I want to come down here and then make sure everything's correct, which it is. And this is my whole template here. I'm not going to be using the additional agent acknowledgement, so I can either delete it. In this case, I'm going to do it just to make it simple. And contingencies, none of them are being removed. And we don't have any kind of HOA disclosures but if i did i would definitely send this out initially with the offer just to make it simple so definitely stay tuned for the next video i'm going to show you how to go ahead and get this offer over to your buyer so they can go ahead and sign and you can get it submitted over to the listing side and get your offer approved let me know how ahs realty pros can help grow your real estate career and give you a more profitable and rewarding real estate business have a great day, guys. Thanks again. Bye. All right, guys. So the offer is ready to get sent over to the buyer for signatures. And I'm going to have another video in the description box below as well. That's going to show you how to go ahead and get this offer submitted over to the buyer and get it signed so you can get it submitted to the listing agent and get your offer approved. So thanks again, guys. Have a great day. And let us know how we could be of help. Take care. Thanks. And here's a little bit more about what we do so hs realty pros we work hard we definitely have fun here so we're always getting together we have live meetings you can follow us on instagram or google yelp look us up and we are a member of the chamber of commerce for concord here and a lot of our agents here do have different designations including myself um and we have no monthly fees and the websites, everything that you can imagine are already included. So you're talking about uh, the CRMs included, a free IDX website with no monthly costs, the Asian mobile app, and we really make this easy. And we do have a career section here with the frequently asked questions that you can definitely go and look up. It's careers.ahsrealtypros.com. Thanks. And if you'd like to join, please email us at join at ahsrealtypros.com 
or you can give us a call at our office number here, 925-338-1485, and I'll also have my contact information down below.